Hey everybody, it's Chris with Xano, and today I'm going to talk to you about our brand new search functionality. We have hugely expanded the search functionality inside Xano and implemented what is commonly known as fuzzy search. It's super powerful, it's super fast, and I can't wait to show you, so let's dive in. Okay, so to show you the data we're going to be working with in this example, I have a database full of movies. It's over 900 pages, over 45,000 records here. So we're working with a lot of data. Now I want to take a look at the old way of searching. Uh, essentially what you were able to do before is you could have an input that is just your search query and we would add that to a query all records function and all we would do is we would define a custom query that says that if our search query is included in whatever database fields we want to look at return those records. Let's say we want to search for Toy Story. I hit run and you can see we are returned some results that search does work however the issues with this are that you can't really get very granular with your searches and on top of that querying your entire database every single time you want to search isn't very efficient it can be very slow if you're working with a large data set let me show you what we've done to fix this so to take advantage of the new search functionality the first thing that i need to do is i need to add an index to the table an index is used to quickly locate certain data without having to search through your entire database table so to use the new search we need to set up an index so i'm going to go right up here to indexes and i'm going to click create index for our index type, we're going to choose search, and then we need to give our search index a name. So I'm going to call this movies search. And now we're going to specify a language for our search. It's very important to do this to make sure that your search functions as expected. For this example, we are searching in English, and then we need to specify the fields that we want to search by and the priority for each of those fields. So I want to search both my title and my overview field. I want my title to be the first priority, and I want my overview to be my second priority. Now just a heads up, depending on the volume of data that you have, it can take a minute or two to build the index. So let's click save. And Xano is building our index right now. And we're done. So now that we've built our index, let's head back over to our API. I have a search query as an input. I'm querying the movies table and returning that in my response. Now let's take a look at our query all records function here. And let's actually implement our search. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to define a custom query. We need to tell this function, hey, please use the index and search by the search query. So I'm going to click this little pencil icon right here. I'm going to add a conditional. And right here, you can see the index that we created that's noted by the dollar sign symbol right here, as well as the word search right under that. So I'm going to click that. Your operator will be search. And your text will just be your search query. So let's go ahead and run this. So if we run and debug, my search query is Toy Story. You can see we have our results. So you can see this was super fast. However, some of our results are pretty good. Some of them are not so good. Now, why is that? Let's talk about ranking and filtering. So if I go back into my query all records function and head over to the output tab, what I want to do here is I want to add an eval so I can actually rank these search results. I can define how to rank them and get the results that I want closer to the top. So I'm gonna add an eval here. My eval field is going to be my search index, rank, and then I'm gonna add a filter and we have a new filter here called search rank, which calculates a ranking value for the search match. So it just returns an integer that indicates the rank of those search results. And my text is going to be my search query. So I update that. And then we save. And now if we run this again, you can see our results have a rank assigned to them now, which indicates how close of a match this result is. However, we can see that it is still a little bit out of order here. So let's go back to our function one more time. We'll go to the output tab. And this time we are going to add some sorting. So I'm going to click add sort. I want to sort by our rank. And I want that in descending order. So we get the most accurate matches up at the top. When I hit save, save again, we'll run this. And you can see we are now getting more accurate results right at the top. Still super fast, and now we're sorting by the relevant rank. So what's next? Let's talk about how to get a little bit more specific with your search queries. You can see here, we search for Toy Story. However, our first result here is uh, Toy Story of Terror. 
that's probably not the first result you expected. However, it does make sense because with the way that our search query is set up right now, how we just have Toy Story and that's it, we're essentially searching for results that contain the word toy and the word story. Now, if we wanted to get more specific with that, if we wanted to say do an exact phrase search, so that would mean that it's going to search for Toy Story as a single phrase, similar to any other search engine that you would use, we have to add quotes to this. Because our input is formatted as JSON, we actually have to type the escaped version of those characters. So I just put a little backslash there before the quote, and then we do another one here. And if we run our query again, our results now only contain the records that contain the phrase Toy Story. So if we just do a quick control F here, every single one of our results contain that phrase. Now you might be saying, Chris, you still have Toy Story of Terror at the top of your list. What's going on? Well, this is the most accurate search result because that is where the phrase Toy Story appears the most. However, obviously we know what we're looking for here. So let's get a little bit more specific with this. Let's go ahead and type in buzz into our search query. And if we run this again, you can see we are now returned the exact results that we expect because all of these results contain the phrase Toy Story and the word buzz. And we could get even more specific with this by using negation. So let's say I'm a user and I'm trying to find all the Toy Story movies, but I remember that there's one that I didn't like and it's the one where Andy goes to college, okay? I want to search for the phrase Toy Story I want those results to also contain the word buzz, but I don't want them to contain the word college. Run this again. You can see again, super fast, and we have only been returned Toy Story and Toy Story 2. And you could continue to stack these if you wanted to. Something to note here is that your searches will ignore what we call stop words. So that's words like and, or, is, the, those words will just be ignored in your search queries. The search now also supports plurals. So if I search for the word toys, you can see we are still returned results that have the word toy in them. Another example would be parties. So if I run this, we get results with the word party in them. I would also like to touch very briefly on search contexts. Let's say as an example, you have a table of user data and you want to create a different search for your front end versus your back end. So Maybe there's a field in your table that you as the administrator want to be able to search by, but you don't want your users to be able to search by that same field. That's just as simple as creating another index and building a new API endpoint around that. This was just a super quick overview of our brand new search features. Again, to summarize, it's much faster, much more efficient, and also offers a lot more control over the search results that you returned. This was a highly requested feature, and we are so happy to finally be able to bring it to you today. Make sure to head down to the comments and let us know if you're using it, how you're using it, how it's working. You can also speak to us via support chat inside Xano or by visiting us on the Xano community. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, as always, for more Xano content and we will see you in the next one.